the big favorites in this one. Um, but yeah, Dracon Esports, these guys are mad lads. Bruno Visky, he's definitely one to watch. He's gonna be uh, he's gonna be making some crazy plays, and it you know it could be a help, it could be a hindrance to his team, but you've got to keep an eye on him every time he's near the ball. And this is a region that, you know, we're not hyping this up necessarily for no reason regarding the amount of goals that we've seen from them. I took the stat count a few seasons back. They were about 2.1 goals per game above every other region. Yeah. That is ridiculous. But as Dex said, they have been improving the defensive side. I'm looking forward to seeing it today. And it will be on the three sins to really try and prove that they can be the danger that they have been hyped up to be. Yeah, the Three Sins have been one of the more consistent teams in uh, this first split for South America. But, you know, so have Draken Esports. They're one of the six teams who have made both of the top eight so far. So both teams definitely showing consistency. But the Three Sins not only make it top eight, they've gone deep. Oh, it's going to be Draken, though, with the first goal. And it's my man, Bruno Visky. He's been making plays all year. Uh, first, you know, really caught my eye in 1v1. But... You know, he's got so much more freedom in threes with the backup of his teammates. He's going to go wild. That was a fantastic serve as well by Luke. Use the backboard. Tried to feint out that he might be going for the shot. It is a great setup for the rest of the team. Here comes Luke. Looks to try and put another one, but Fultz is going to keep it away. Back to the midfield. Look at the second. It's not quite there for them. But this is a fantastic start for Draken. And they're going to want to keep this going. Yeah, this is ideal. And I, I, I really do expect this to be a close series, even if we are going to get the expected outcome with uh, the three sins coming out on top. We did see a game five between Draken and True Neutral in the very last regional for South America. So these guys, you know, they're, they didn't make it past that quarterfinal, but they do seem to be um, on the upward trend like the three sins are. You know, we've got two teams here who are very likely to make uh, the final day of competition for this major. And for Draken, this has sort of been the limit for them as PJ looks to go for the second one. He's got it off the crossbar. Follow up from Maddox. Goes blackboard once again. Voltix. Well, Volt finds himself a little bit too far forward. Can't take the third shot. That would have definitely been the goal back that they need. For Draken, you know, they've got good results. Teams like Noble, you know, other top teams. But, you know, it has been the three sins. It has been the true neutrals of the world. That seems to have been where their cap has been in the region. This would be a fantastic chance, though, for them to start turning that around. Gian can't get the ball fully passed. Halfway done here. Only one goal. Bruno Visky, that is a great clear. He's put it right in the middle of two players. Not only does that cause a bit of a communication issue, but also means you've got to figure out which one you want to go for it. And so far from Draken, they've not overcomplicated this. They've stuck to their neutral. They have stuck to the foundational play. And it has gone very well for them. But Matix has got Volt to come up with him. And he didn't take the option. Instead, wanted to go solo. Yeah, so far the rotation is holding up brilliantly for Draken. That's, you know, the aspect of this match where I expected them to be second best in. I think they can hang mechanically with the very top teams in the region, like the three sins. But it's uh, the organizational side that uh, they usually fall apart in. Um, and so far that hasn't been the case in this first game. To produce a, a consistent performance for, for this entire series in that regard, that's still up in the air. But for now, all good. Oh, that's a risky play by Jean. He's gone straight into the dunk. Um, gets away with it, but I think that was very fortunate, especially when he's third man. Yeah, you really want to be trying to take the challenge on that one. You uh, don't need to take those sort of risks. But now PJ wants to go to the wall. He's going to go for the star points. Luke's followed him. Wow. Bit of a different way of trying to defend one of those, but I tell you what, I can't argue against the results. Volt ends up missing. PJ's in a bit of an awkward spot. Not a great touch from him. Is yeah. that 2-0? Oh. No, just off to the side. Wow. Well, that really should have been on target, if nothing else. And it looked like it would have gone in had it been on target. Um, great chances for Draken Esports. This is this is a real contender here that we're looking at. If they can keep up, keep up this level of performance, looks backwards in goal, but he's luckily going to watch the ball bounce off his own crossbar and then go over the top of him. Got to give credit to Draken for the confidence they're coming hot out the gate with here. They've attacked early any aerial plays and they, again Jan just making that diving challenge they need to close the gap like that against this very dangerous three sins lineup so far so good the three sins keep going to this wall but the plays are not there we've talked about how good the three sins are mechanically but they failed to show it so far looking for the bump and luke will avoid it defensive play by draken has been fantastic 
Always got a player where they need them. Now Gian has got midfield option in Brunovski. Instead wants to go solo. And that's more time wasted. 20 seconds on the clock. Matix wants to force a challenge. Luke will oblige him. Doesn't come out great on it. Bruno, a little bit too far forward. Incoming oh. shot. And it's off target yet again. Final few seconds. Have Draken managed to survive this game one? And it feels like a game five. We're in the first game of the broadcast today. And that might be a late second oh. goal. Oh, Matix really did well there. And it's like, about as good as he could do in that position. He had all three players to beat. And with zero seconds on the clock, he just had to hit the target and hope for the best. Good defense still by Dragon Esports. This is really the thing that we're watching for today. The defense of the South American teams, because mm. there's no question that these guys can compete offensively. They've always been able to produce incredible mechanical plays. They've mm. always been able to produce, uh, you know, speed, confidence, even at the highest level, even at international competition. But uh, the defense leveling up in the region is what's causing the score lines to remain lower like this one is. And I do really want to discuss the free sins performance there because it looked like they had the right ideas. It wasn't like they were coming in here trying to play a different play style. Maybe, you know, the nerves getting to them. But mechanically, they were not pulling off what we would expect them to pull off. You know, we see them go to the walls numerous times. They're not looking for the passing plays. We see them, you know, just get up into positions where they should be succeeding and it feels like they're overcomplicating the play. Yeah, they didn't look too comfortable. I think they were maybe surprised by how solid Draken were in defense. They probably expected it to be easier um, to get goals on them and they were just you know, barreling forward, um, attacking quickly, just relying on their mechanical ability to get goals for free. But that's really not how this series looks to be developing. They're, you know, we're going to need to see a smarter approach from uh, the three sins, they're going to need to, like you like you said, start spreading out and start passing the ball between each other. Um, that's smart by Matix. I love that he slowed down the game there. You can see the defense weren't expecting it. Now there's so much space for them to work with. PJ, the Prince, makes it 1-0. And already a better look for the three sins. And it was about time that Draken got caught for this because that third man has been holding very far forward. They've been very positive with their approach to this game. But the only issue is that is that if something goes wrong, if you do get that boom in clear, it's very difficult to react. That's actually what caused the setup in the last game where we were almost certain it was going to be tied up at one each. Instead, it wasn't. Luke now choosing to play a little bit more cautiously on this. Going to buy a bit of time and, well, Bruno removes the passing option. Fantastic defensive play this time around. I've got time to try and control this. Over the top of PJ. Force of the challenge from Maddox. That is a fantastic trade. Can they work the ball out from here? Volt's having an argument with the wall, and the wall always tends to win, <laughs> but he still kept this going. Oh my He's goodness. <laughs> another one. And Volt has scraped together oh. a play out of nowhere. Well, you know, sometimes just the presence of an opposing player is enough to make you flop past the ball. It looks like the defender did not expect Vault to have zero boost in the play and completely whiff his block. But you know, both players went, both players went for a block, so neither one got the contact on the ball. This is perfect for the three sins, though. That's two goals involving two mind games. Mind game on the finish there is a mind game on the setup earlier on. And, you know, that's what Draken have got to keep an eye out for. The slow plays of the three sins. The adaptation has been brilliant. Jean tried to go over the top with the air dribble. Delayed touch was right by PJ. And now it is all on Draken to get these plays going. Can they displace this defense or can they just use another player from the three sins to rocket a ball top corner like that one almost did? Jan just forcing these shots. I think they're going to have to be a bit smart of the approach. Right now, just putting shots in from midfield, lining into the fence that's waiting for you. It's wow. not gonna work. Into the mid, PJ off the wall. He wants to buy his team a little bit of time. They weren't in a great spot to follow up. Look to the corner. He needs that second touch. He needs a follow up. He's got the follow up. And the three sins ready for it yet again. Yeah, PJ's putting in a great performance here. That was another clutch save on a difficult shot. And I think this kind of pace is suiting the three sins a lot more. Um, when in game one, they were trying to just take the battering ram to Draken Esports and it wasn't working at all. Uh, Draken were able to hang with them mechanically and in the speed department, but now that they've 
you know, try to control the ball a bit more. Different story. They're starting to move around the field, uh, read the game a little bit more effectively than Draken are, especially PJ, who I keep mentioning everywhere that uh, Draken don't want him to be, that's exactly where he tends to be. And this is a really tough position for Draken to be in because they don't really have the experience that um, the three sins have. It's that reset. No reset by Matix. He went for it with the rebounds. That was pretty close, but no cigar. Yeah, go a bit unfortunate with the ball moving too far away, especially if you are going to reset it like that. You want the ball almost directly ahead of you by the time you get to the it. Instead, went to the left, and the angle just was not available for him to get, hook the car back around. So far, so good for the three sins. They have kept this clean. Even when demos like that one come through, they haven't had to worry about it too much. That will be off target. PJ realizing that fact. Fault. I think he wanted to try and find PJ that time, but it's not a great touch from Xi'an. Looking for the backboard. PJ wants oh. another highlight reel, and PJ's starting to feel confident on this one. It's gone from making sure the regular mechanics are down to, well, flip reset, double taps, and incredible angle shots like that one. Well, you know, PJ in his RLCS LAN debut, he went for, you know, a flip reset in his own defensive corner as last man <laughs> against, I think it was NRG or something. <laughs> he, he definitely does not lack creativity uh, and confidence in all aspects of the, of the game. Um, but they haven't really needed too much in the way of crazy mechanical ability to handle Draken in the second game. It's been all about positioning. It's been all about um, intercepting the passing plays and the shots that Draken have attempted and slowing down their offense, controlling the ball, going for those mind games which Draken have really struggled with. Yeah, I'm making mention of that. That is probably my favorite thing Fair so enough. far. Shot comes in and, well, it's BJ at this point. He is uh, not going to make any sort of mistakes. Volt, who's going to score this? Who's allowed it? It's going to be Volt. <laughs> well, you can definitely yeah. tell K-Dot wasn't involved in this team because <laughs> that was like, um, well, that was very unselfish from both parties. I thought they might try the open net team pinch. You know, why not? Just go for go for a boomer. Um, it's almost impossible to miss from that range, but that shows, you know, great discipline that we're not used to seeing from uh, the South American teams. That they're not trying to steal each other's goals. They're not trying to top the goals per game category. They're not trying to pinch on an open net. It's all business today. And it, with the amount of uh, points that there are on the line that are all working towards that world championship qualification at the end of this year, I, I'm not surprised. You know, this is this mm. is definitely serious stuff uh, for both these teams. Seeding is going to be really important going into the playoffs next week. And if you can go 3-0 here, you were big talking difference about, going 3-1. <laughs> you, you were talking about the discipline. <laughs> I think it's it's impossible to lose this one. You know, two seconds. <laughs> You need, a, you need a pinch from the kickoff to get the ball in on one second or a direct shot. So as long as the three sins hit the ball here, guaranteed win. <laughs> there you go. They can't lose as long as they hit the ball on the kickoff with two seconds left. I don't know, man. We have seen uh, some players not necessarily manage that one, but, you know, we're not going to drag too far into the past necessarily. The three sins able to respond after what was a, well, a bit of an odd game one from them. Now we look at them and you're saying, well, just keep playing like this, really. And it's now up to Draken to try and figure out, are they capable of playing at that sort of pace? And number two, can they start winning some of these challenges? Because the three stands are not only coming out on top of a lot of these challenges on the ground, but they've got the follow-up play that much quicker than Draken. If they can't do that, then Draken are just giving up space and giving up a player. Well, you know, some, uh, the thing that um, I've been really impressed with the, with the three sins in that game is their control. Um, Draken showed that they were able to hang with them when, you know, the game is mostly about hard clears, mostly about um, fast aerials. But uh, the three sins, when they brought the ball down a bit more, when they were taking controlled first touches, trying to just keep the possession, that is a, a style that I don't think Draken can match them in. Mm. Um, uh, you know, we, we can't just use one game as evidence, but you look at the team's history, uh, the three sins, they're the favorites for a reason. They're more adaptable. They've got far more experience. And although Draken are very mechanically skilled, they don't have the practice yet. They haven't had the time uh, to reach the same level that the three sins are already at. It's going to be a shot immediately, but has been a, a growing thing, though, over in South America. Well, they had the same issues that OCE did when they were first introduced, as we see PJ missing that shot, where it was one team dominant, and to a level it still is. 
over uh, in South America, but they have got emerging teams and that level of competition is going to improve the region altogether and start developing more talent for them to use when we get into the international stages. Ooh, what a save wow. from Volt, keeps it out. And he managed to use the crossbow as a sort of pseudo clear as well to keep his team in a good spot. Yeah, that's a really important touch by Vault. Even even though he knows the crossbar is probably hitting the ball, or the ball's hitting the crossbar there, he, he can't let it bounce for free. He needs to make some kind of clearing touch on it. And the timing was very, very difficult. You know, absolutely no time to waste when the ball's coming at you that quickly, so credit to him. It was, you know, PJ holding it down in defense the last game. Now Vault stepping up in game number three. It's a shot right down the middle. Bruno looks to follow. It's a very heavy first touch. We need to try and get the first one a little bit lower than that, so that way it is easier to follow. Start setting yourself up for those air dribbles that you know Bruno would love to go for. Freestands figuring out where to push at this point. Matix has got it. Pops it over to PJ. It's going to drop into the midfield. Volt, you would be very brave to go for that, as much as he was considering it. Once again, buying that time for his team, and this has been the major issue so far. For Draken over the last seven minutes of gameplay. So whenever they do start collecting the ball and getting rid of it, it's a midfield wall that has actually been oh. the difference maker. This time though, Jan, he realizes he's got no one with him. He's got to go by himself. <laughs> got himself a little bit of time. Bruno follows up. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Draken were expecting to get that chance. There was nobody around for him to pass to. Yeah, it, it was boost problems. You know, they've been stuck in defense for a bit there. Their boosts get stolen away. So when the counter attack comes in, it's just impossible to catch up with it. And like you said, I don't think they were expecting Jan to just walk past two players uh, with the same fake 50-50. But, you know, both both teams are really focusing in on the mind games now. Um, I, I didn't expect Draken to, you know, even be willing to slow down their pace and to slow down their touches, but they, they definitely are. They've been going for a few fake challenges and it's been paying off. It's, made it very awkward for the three sins to progress but like our, like I said earlier the boost is dwindling at times um, on the Draken Esports side so they have to be extremely cautious with that boost button they don't want to let it run dry because this is a much more patient three sins lineup than we're used to seeing Luck alone on defense there he's gonna get the clear though and just like in the first game I'm very impressed with the defensive organization um, mm -hmm. you know the calm defense that we're seeing from Draken Esports has been paramount to just staying even in this game. They've done a fantastic job of communicating these boost issues because there's been numerous times as we do see the ball off the backboard, there will be no follow-up from Matix. Midfield hold yet again, but actually might be good Bruno. for Bruno to try and follow. Flip reset. Oh. I think that touch in the midair just too far away from him to really get there in time. You know, there's been a few... Oh, oh. Wait, here's the man games. Oh. Going to follow up for Luke, decides to just oh. blast it, and PJ, as always, is the one in the way. 80 seconds currently left in this game, and Draken, despite seeming like they were barely holding on in this one, have now started putting together a lot more opportunities. PJ off the backboard, Bruno gets it, and he gets it to the corner as well. It's going to help his team out a little bit, and they are going to finally clear. I really wanted to see the double mind game on the dribble there from Jean. He got one of them and the ball was sitting perfectly to go for the second, but played for the flick instead. You know, maybe it's just my own uh, my own preference in that position. You get the first mind game, you have to go for the second one. You know, we saw that from Justin in North America recently, going for the triple mind game. It's going to make every single highlight reel, but it can be effective. It's not just a a play to style on your opponents. It's in incredibly effective at completely breaking their morale. Still nil-nil. We promised you goals, and instead, we have got a defensive masterclass from both teams. I think for the neutrals, this maybe has been less exciting than expected from South America, but I feel for us as analysts, Johnny, and maybe, you know, the, the more South American enthusiasts and the South American fans out there. This is a lot more impressive to see. This is what you want to see when you do have all the analysts starting to question, you know, can this team defensively, or can this region defensively hold up? So yeah. far, this has been a much better showing of the foundational play. As PJ looks to try and add one more to his tally, passes over to Matix, and it is off the crossbar, and we have got overtime.
Yeah, I'm impressed. This is, you know, great communication from both teams in defense. Like you mentioned earlier, they're, they're communicating when boost is an issue so that they can send one player who does have enough boost to challenge. Um, the, the timing of the challenges and the follow-ups have been really impressive. That's one of the keys at this level is not just to have one challenge on a ball, but to have a second one ready behind it just in case the first guy gets outplayed. And that is something that's really missing from South America. Hold that thought. Matic's almost with a free aerial there. It's well contested by Dracon Esports. But the three sins, for me, they have to be the favorite still, because even though Draken have been impressive, oh, is that open? It might be, oh. Luxus, oh, he puts it in, wow. Just as I'm about to say three sins are surely the favorites in a calculated matchup, it's Draken Esports have hit them a second time, they lead 2-1. And there we go, Draken, two to one up. They've got two opportunities to get themselves through to that 2-0 part of the bracket. And we can't understate just how huge that is. You've heard us made mention a few times about how teams have, in the past, been reverse swept by the bracket. But that's like one in eight teams that we see it happen to. If Draken can make this happen, they get three chances to head through to tomorrow's playoffs. Yeah, this is pretty crazy. You know, we were saying earlier, but we expect both of these teams to make it into um, next week's top eight, which is absolutely the case. But we expected the three sins to be the main contender to get in with a perfect record alongside 11s, who are the favorites. The three sins just came second place in the most mm -hmm. recent regional. This is exactly the same um, as you know, a, a team like Vitality or BDS going 2-1 down over mm -hmm. in Europe. This is the same thing as an NRG or a Space Station Gaming uh, going 2-1 down in the second series of the day in North America. The, you know, this shouldn't be happening. Even if you are one of those uh, top eight teams, you know, you're, you're looking at teams like Alpine and NA to be part of that conversation, maybe a guild in EU, you know, the, you never think that they're going to take down one of the top two teams this early in the day, but that's what's happening. Oh, that's a great shot, though, and a fantastic response from the Free Sins, exactly what they did in game two. They come out swinging here in game number four, and, you know, whilst we do talk about upsets and we do talk about how ridiculous this weekend has been, there's an upset for you. Eleven's eSports have no. been beaten no. in round two of the Swiss, taken down by Atypical. Three to what? two, as we do go <laughs> tunnel up, and Johnny tries to uh, regain what his sense of, well, the world is. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, this is just to get, this is getting crazy in uh, South American Major. I mean, it just shows the additional pressure. This is like two regional events in one uh, in terms of overall points working towards that world championship seeding and world championship qualification. The, you know, this is the this is the real deal. It's the biggest mm -hmm. event of RLCS Season X so far in South America. Um, and yeah, it looks like it's going to turn out to be a bit different than we expected. Eleven's losing already in the day. And the three sins up against two match points. Now, they are two goals ahead, so it looks like this one should be uh, theirs to lose. But that is all you need to know, to know that this region is, you know, it's as unpredictable as any other. Uh, the top team going into today already dropping a series. And, uh, well, to add a little bit of normalcy to it, True Neutral did 3-0 error. So that's a bit more normal. And Noble are currently in game five. So that's maybe a little bit less so. This has been oh, quite the introduction to our oh. regional horses. Jan doesn't want to wait for game five. He has got a great setup, and Luke again is the provider. I've loved the setup play from Luke. Yeah, beating PJ to the punch there. Jean very, very quick to that ball. Pass was perfectly hit to him. Um, and with how effective the three sins interceptions have been in those kind of positions, that really highlights how you know, accurate that um, passing play had to be, how well-timed that approach from Jean had to be in order to get past PJ, who's been having a great defensive display. And yeah, this is great respect being shown by both teams as well to the shooting capabilities of these players who are, hit, who are hitting those passing plays because, you know, the defense there are staring at, um, uh, they're staring at the passing, the pass coming in thinking, is that a shot? Is that going to be on target? These guys are well known for being able to shoot from just about anywhere. I do like the adjustments that we have seen from PJ over the last few months. 
Used to be a player that I would expect when he saw the passing plays coming in, would usually go full on in to try and be quicker, try and get the interception, even if it was at an awkward, awkward angle. Instead, now he's waiting to see the full play and he's giving himself that little bit of extra time by going for a block instead. And because he's doing that, he's also winning the blocks the vast majority mm. of the time. So he hasn't had to overcomplicate things as PJ's oh. shot straight down the middle. It'll be one of those ones where you look at it and just say, well, anywhere else. Yeah. And it was probably in. Yeah, he was focusing all on the power there to stop. Okay, I'm just going to hit this as hard as I can. And then as long as I don't hit it straight to the goalkeeper, it's the goal. And I've hit it straight to the goalkeeper. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> it happens. You focus um, right on in on that <laughs> middle, don't you? Yeah, well, you just want, you know, the difference between hitting the ball at the absolute hardest and, you know, at a speed that a goalkeeper can uh, actually handle quite easily, it's a very small margin for error there. You know, you got to catch that on the tiny little spot that gives maximum power. Uh, that's what all PJ was really focusing on, just drill it on target. But the, the shot deserved um, better placement, I think, with how wide open the pass left PJ. Speaking of which, imagine how wide open this region would suddenly be if we can see Draken come through and take the win. That is a fantastic clear. Forces PJ on the way back and allows Bruno to move in for the challenge. Draken want this done right now. Oh, oh but they just couldn't quite get there on time. And now their third man is in a bit of trouble. Volt looks to try and go for the setup. Huge demo. Does mean that the passing option was suddenly gone. Can't afford for this to go to a 2-0 deficit yet again. And up on the wall, knows the challenge is coming in, but he's got it set up again for Bruno. Now he becomes a passing option, but Bruno couldn't get there on time. Maddox turns, gets the shot, drops oh, it off wow. for PJ. What a assist. Fantastic stuff by Maddox. Yeah, nobody saw that coming. It looks like Jan was expecting it to be a 50-50 at the worst. Suddenly the ball bounces down behind him and he thinks, okay, that's probably... Probably a goal. I don't think that the three sins are going to miss that one. And he's absolutely right. 3-1. And we might actually get four here. No, massive shot rolls wide. So once again, another one of those cases of the power being the focus when placement really was the priority. Yeah, that was the one that you did want to see go right down the middle. Yeah. Um, another good block. We're running out of time here now for Draken. They were looking good for a little while. Has that last goal just finished it off? Well, that one certainly will. Champions Field, you can hear it from here. Doesn't sound like it is looming. Love that pass. Look at that from PJ. Just chipping the ball off the diagonal wall. That's uh, something that I wanted to see from Draken earlier on. They were um, trying to center the ball more conventionally, just you know rolling around that back wall, um, which is something you see in ranked gameplay a lot in Rocket League. So you guys watching, if you go queue up and play the game yourself, you're probably going to see uh, plenty of center ball. It just rolls around towards the goalkeepers. And uh, then people still miss it. But, uh, you know, at this level, you can't you can't really center the ball like that and expect to get anything out of it. You need to get the ball away from that back wall, make it difficult for the defense. That's exactly what PJ's diagonal wall pass um, accomplished in that regard. Yeah, we only really saw those sort of plays working when, you know, the peeps sort of started changing that on us last season where they would take ball from the corner and then try and follow up with a demo. But if you don't get yeah. things like that, if you can't take out where the follow-up is, it's going to be very difficult Ooh. to try and... Get rid of. There we go. 3 nil advantage. Or 3 goal advantage, I should say. And Champions Field is up next. Who is going to be able to take it? And especially with 11s now down, you want to try and get your day done nice and quickly because there is possibilities out there that you could lose and start putting, being put against them in future rounds. Absolutely. You know, it's just become more dangerous. You know, the loser of this series uh, we'd never expect to be in the same score as 11s going into the next ride. You'd never think, okay, well, you're, you're probably thinking, oh, well, we lost, but at least we're dodging all the other good teams. And you take a look at the bracket and think, wait, what? Why are 11s on 1-1 one, one series score? What? Yeah. Who, who missed? We, we who, 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 time. One of the teams that yeah. just won in this round is going to be very upset. It's like, yay, we started to turn our tournament around. We're 1-1 one, one now. Who's up next? We're ready to take you. Oh, it's 11s. Yeah, then oh, he faced the best um, team. <laughs> yeah, it's not good it's, for it's, us. It's rough because, yeah, the way, like you said, one of the teams that started off the day with a 0-1 score uh, will be playing against 11s in the next round. And that's probably a 1-2 score for them on the mm. day, even if they have bounced back well. Then they have to win two in a row. So uh, 11s losing that makes it d just difficult for a lot of other teams as well. 
Um, but I don't think that they're going to be too concerned about that. They, they're just going to be trying to fix their own situation. Think, okay, what on earth went wrong there? Why have we lost a series? And how can we prevent that from happening again? Uh, the Three Sins had a great response there, uh, showing their experience and actually dominating uh, at the end of that game, which they needed to win. But they need to win this one as well. And uh, Draken Esports have performed very well overall. I've been, I've been very impressed with them. I think that they could easily take this. It's turned out to be a lot more of a 50-50 series than I expected um, because the, the defense and the organization of Draken Esports has definitely improved. That's off the backboard, PJ. Wow. As always, just this has been one of the best defensive performances I have seen out of an individual player. Just taking his time, getting to the plays at the right time as well as the shot oh. comes in. PJ holding himself as the third man. And I think that's a difficult thing to do as well when you are third man is that you have to turn up to the play, but you have to turn up at the right time. You get there too early. You have to slow down. You have to waste boost. Matic's not the best touch ever, uh, but who else is going to come and help him out? You know, back in the, you know, even a couple of seasons back, um, you would have seen every single one of these backboard um, hits would have been followed up by a, by a rebound, even if it looks like an easy clear because whiffs were so prominent and de the defenses just were not um, consistent enough at clearing those. But right now, no one is flying up for these, um, you know, kind of half chances that are backward rebounds. Oh, that, that was just about good enough in the clear from Vault. He needed to keep that ball hugging the back wall to prevent the shot from coming in. Uh, it looks like Draken fancied it, even though it was such a tight angle. I'm not surprised to see that. You know, if, if they've got a clear look at the goal, absolutely, they're going to go for it. If there's a, you know, if there's a defender flying up for a uh, rebound over their own head, yeah, they've got they've got respect for um, for that defender at this point with how well the three sins have been playing. Loop will be starting to chase back. Almost gets the demo. Moves into the midfield. Vault to Matix. Over again. Here comes PJ. They've committed all three. It's going to be up to Draken now to try and see how quickly they can transition this. Matix landed well, and he does by the time that he needed to. Fantastic play from him. Luke wants to try and keep this pressure on. Jan in. And that is a bit of a wasteful touch. Hands it straight over to Vault. Who gives it to PJ. Back into the midfield, but Vault misreads it. And Matic. now we're going back and forth. There's a couple of small misplays that are giving away free clears. But there's that again, that brilliant control from Matix as he catches the ball. Awkward ball flying at him. Um, and he needed to make two touches on it to get the ball cleared to safety. Makes both of them uh, without looking uncomfortable at all. That's one of the big changes we've seen coming out from South America this season. Uh, the, everybody's just so consistent with those defensive plays. Great first touch there. Um, Draken trying to dribble the ball out of defense now. But uh, the three sins are not over committing. They were always leaving that one man back. They're always time wasting brilliantly with that third man. Now it's Vault's turn to just keep uh, Draken at bay while the rest of his team come back to help him. And yeah, I don't know what, how many more ways I can say that the defense of these teams <laughs> continues to impress me, but they certainly do. Going to be dropping down Vault. Oh, it's too high. I think he was in two minds about trying to pass it to his left over to Matic, so trying to take the shot. Ends up picking oh. it too late. Off the crossbar yet again. Vol oh. make it happen. There was a player in the way. Definitely made it a lot more difficult. Here comes PJ. There's no way they're missing that one. The three sins up by one. Three sins piling on the pressure. And eventually the boost ran dry. Draken couldn't keep up. They didn't have a last man. They needed a fourth player there um, to dive in the way of that shot. Great recycling of the play. No time wasted by the three sins. And with that amount of shots on target, that volume of pressure, Draken, even with their you know, composed defense, their communication that they've been shown show today, they were not able to hang. Down to Luke. So oh my goodness, more Bruno. Cuts of the rotation, but here's Luke up again. Not the best touch. Vol already back. Jan, well, he had a decision to make there. Does he want to go aggressive? It's not a great first touch. Draken know that needs to get the play going, but it's oh, down oh, by two. Oh, oh, they ever. The three sins showing off their experience here in game five. What a pass. Matix across the box. PJ coming from the defensive blind spot. Really left nothing up to chance there. And it's been, I think, a, just a phenomenal series from PJ all around. Uh, starts it off with uh, the defensive masterclass in game two. Now he's picked up both goals in the ace match. And although it has been an impressive series for Draken, it looks like it might be ending for them here. Vault puts in a third. Three sins have done, or at least looks like they will be doing what 11s could not.
We've been talking about just how good the rotational play has been, getting the basics right. But this game, especially for the three sins, has been improving that level above. The ability to spot when you're allowed to turn for the play, when you're allowed to put that extra pressure on. It's something that we haven't seen from them for the majority of this series, but when they have gone for it here in game five, they have just looked far too quick and far too good at capitalizing on small defensive mistakes as Volt would like to try and make it four. It's off the crossbar. I mean, off the post, I should say. We'll drag and at least get themselves one more for the for the roads. They do deserve it. They have been very, very solid. I would not be surprised to see them in the playoffs. It's going to be up to them to try and figure out where they want to go from here. Luke. Nice flick up. Bruno, that's a tough angle. Decides to go for the block instead. That's the only real way of getting the goal in. So what has been a bit of a crazy round two is at least going to normalize for the lads over on the free sins. They move through and they are going to go 2-0 in the Swiss system. Yeah, three sins probably expected at this point to run into, uh, you know, maybe an 11s, uh, but now they're going to look at the bracket. Their uh, mouths are going to be watering, thinking, yes, we can definitely 3-0 this <laughs> with the <laughs> 11s down there. Although I don't think it would have drawn them going in as top two seeds anyway, but still, it'll be promising for them and their confidence in moving forward. So they've been able to come back from behind in a very tough series against the Draken Esports who have performed brilliantly. And, uh, you know, you say you wouldn't be surprised if you don't, if, uh, if they make playoffs. I'll be surprised if they, if they don't make playoffs. I think this this team should be making playoffs if they, um, you know, they're going to need a horrendous draw not mm -hmm. to. Um, but with 11s down there, it's definitely not safe. But yeah, Draken, well played to them. Three sins were too good today, but Draken Esports definitely have potential. Yeah, Draken is a team that I'm looking at right here and just going, well, didn't really excel at very many places, but if you are coaching a team, if you are trying to build a team from the bottom, that's kind of exactly what you want right there. You have got the setup are ready to go. You can now just start enhancing uh, the rest of the team. And we have now come to the end of round number two. When we come back from a quick break, we're going to head into round three.